He's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna, he's coming and puke! He's gonna puke! He's gonna puke! He's gonna puke! He's gonna, he's gonna puke! These videos are satiric reviews. You don't have to agree, but don't bitch about it. I hate this channel. Man, let's see what you got! Hey there, I'm Social Injustice Warrior Vien Fuso, and when I was a kid, my taste in wrestling was quite peculiar. The wrestlers I found myself interested in weren't necessarily the guys who were being pushed to the top. I wasn't a huge fan of Stone Cold or The Rock. I was more interested in D'Lo Brown and Raven, who weren't exactly main eventers. One great case of this was a wrestler known as Draws, and on occasion, Puke. Since you are able to regurgitate, you know, on command, it just seems to me that, that, that it's pretty logical that you should be puke. Puke is, puke is good. I think <laughs> puke is nice. And it shouldn't be just plain puke, it should be puke, you know. I was a big fan of draws, and not just because we both had acid reflux and an affinity for plaid shorts. Though I'm sure that played a part in it, yeah. He was very different looking, and even as a kid, I knew that when I got older, I wanted tattoos and piercings, so I'm sure that that was a part of it as well. I mean, look at that little face. Imagine that going through that kid's head. That kid, that kid is going to turn into a bald, bearded bastard in no time. Anyway, my point is, I really like Darren Drozdov. Drozdov? Drozdov. I don't know, bitch at me in the comments for getting the name wrong. I mean, I, I corrected myself on the Wendy Richter thing before that video even went up, and y'all just continue to hammer it home. It's not Wendy Richter, it's Wendy Richter. I, I know, I know, I made a mistake. I make mistakes. I'm stupid. Is that what you, is that what you wanted? You got it, you win, you win. While his bizarre look is what caught my attention, his in-ring prowess is what kept it there. Of course, this wasn't a man who was going to become WWF champion, and I'd even known that at the time. But here was a guy who entertained me a lot that I could easily see winning titles, so long as the company didn't keep calling him puke. And luckily, they didn't. His run in the WWE, then the WWF at the time, was a brief one, as he debuted in 1998 after a short stint in ECW, and was done with the company and wrestling as a whole by the end of 1999. Upon officially entering the WWF, he for a brief time was affiliated with the Legion of Doom, as its third member. So for this time period, you had Road Warrior Animal, Road Warrior Hawk, and Road Warrior Puke. P perfect, perfect, guys. Booking, you've done it again. In my view, very, very sad. I don't find it sad. You know, Hawkett, you know, he's messed up right now. It's very, very obvious. Get out of the ring. You don't come kind of spoil that situation. So I guess, wait a minute. Oh. Mark Henry, the cheap shot, even started. Oh, the lowdown. Well, here's Draws. Oh. Draws coming to help Animal. Animal in no condition to have this European title matchup, unfortunately. Later. I don't remember it even being mentioned as to how he obtained the spot or even what his relationship and dynamic was with the two future Hall of Famers. He was just kind of there. Just, just, just put in the place. There, there you go. Their time together was unmemorable at best, and at worst, pretty fucking horrendous. As Draws only made his way into the legendary stable due to Hawk's alcohol problems. It was evident to the fans watching at home, including a young me, that Draws was enabling Hawk in an effort to take his place in the team. The most curious part of the whole angle was a scene in which the suffering Road Warrior Hawk made his way to the top of the Raw Titantron, potentially to commit suicide. Draws, being the good friend he was, followed the legend up there. You stay down from Whoa. Don't you even come Hawk, Hawk. Don't you come Don't me. keep him Take away. Take it easy. And then very visibly pushed him off. Oh, Get a shirt. No. Oh, hey. oh. What? God yeah. almighty. In front of his partner Animal, the entire audience in attendance, and everyone watching at home. And yet somehow, 
This didn't end the team. This wasn't enough to, to, to completely nix the whole thing. Animals still continued to team with Draws. Commentary helped push the narrative that Draws was actually trying to grab Hawk before he jumped. But, but come on, are we watching the same event? I don't know if Draws, I don't want to say pushed him, but... Do you just think that your viewers don't have working eyes? And brains? Making his way to the what a situation, the bell has it wrong. Uh, the referee's not gonna start this match, hey. is he? Ross, come on! This match needs to be stopped. Here, come, uh, here comes Animal. Gotta get this stopped. Oh, oh, to me, like Animal, oh, seemingly. Look at you! Look at you! You're gonna do! You're gonna do! They continue as a team until WWF's Capital Carnage pay-per-view where Draws inadvertently cost the team a victory against the Headbangers, leading to Animal attacking the replacement Legion of Doom member. So wait, l l let me just get this straight. Tossing your best friend and tag team partner off the raw entrance stage, that's fine, that's okay. Acceptable, understandable, I, 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 could, I, I could work with this. But costing you a throwaway match that had no titles on the line, no, no real relevance to it, on a UK only pay-per-view. That's that's too far. I uh, none, none of that shit. I ain't gonna have any bit of that. It also really shows you how much the company cared about this teaming and this story that it was dropped on a pay-per-view that only the UK fans got at the time. Draws would slightly rebrand following the end of his time as a side road warrior. At first telling stories of his time in professional wrestling in Draws's world skits, and honestly that just the the very vague recollection I have of that, it, it never did anything for me. Maybe I was too young. Yeah, these are these are the other two of my little babies here. I love playing with my snakes and hanging out. Boy, it doesn't get much prettier than this, does it? <laughs> he would soon turn heel, steal Buff Bagwell's entrance attire, and was joined by a newly debuting Prince Albert. A body piercer, of course. And Vic Grimes, going by the name of Key, who is basically Draws' drug dealer. Again, the Attitude Era was a very different time. They didn't do a whole lot, and personally, I don't even remember Vic Grimes ever being in the WWF. I do, however, remember Prince Albert, because it was around the time that I learned what a Prince Albert was, and even now, I still really wish I didn't. And those, unfortunately, for as limited as they are, were really the only highlights from Draz's time with the company and the industry as a whole, as his career was cut tragically short upon a botched spot performed by D'Lo Brown. D'Lo hit his running powerbomb, landing Draz on his neck, though this never killed Draz's spirit, telling Brown not to blame him as he was being stretchered. Tragically, the incident left Draz a quadriplegic, having no movement below the neck temporarily. He has since regained movement in his arms and upper body. Only days after his career-ending injury, he'd married WWF seamstress Julie Youngberg, though the two would later divorce in 2005. Dross continued with the company, becoming a reoccurring guest on WWE's internet show, Bite This, which ironically, uh, kind, kind of bites. Or at least it did. And for a long time after, he'd continue to write wrestling-related articles. In the case of Draws, it's sad to see that not too many people remember his stint in the company, especially when considering how literally life-changing it was for the guy himself. Ultimately, I do have some fond memories of Draws with the company, but it's hard to think of what could have been. Maybe nothing at all. We don't know. But I'd like to think that, you know, maybe a couple hardcore title reigns would have come about. You know, may maybe... Maybe a European champion type thing. I don't think they'd give him the IC title, but like, you know, maybe, maybe European champion. I don't know, but we'll never know. And that part sucks. Ultimately, that was Draws' his time in the WWF. I have always been a fan of the guy, and you know what? I have the plaid shorts to prove it. Tell you something, brother. You're watching the Social Injustice Warrior V Infuso's channel, dude. So if you like the words that came out of his mouth hole, and you too want to become a VTard, don't forget to like and subscribe and click that little bell icon to get updates and notifications. Ooh, tell him what up, Mach. Ooh, yeah. Follow the man on Twitter, yeah, because we all know it's not stalking if it's on the internet, yeah. Join the madness by joining the Discord, and if you have a moment of time and a free dollar to spare, head over to the SIJW's Patreon, dig it, where you can request videos, get exclusive videos, and early access to content, yeah. Or go down to PayPal, where you can buy the shirts, brother. But most importantly, just remember, if you're not tuning in, 
then you're, you're missing, missing out. out.